Number 41. What is the force on the charge located at x is equal to 8 centimeters in figure 18.52a, given that q is equal to 1 microcoulomb? So here's letter A. Where is 8 centimeters? It looks to me like it is right here. So we've got to find the force on that charge. Now we've done these problems already, right? We know that there are, we got to look at each then of the other charges separately, okay? And talk about the forces that uh, they both are exhibiting on that central charge, okay? So why don't we do this? Let's call this uh, Q1, Q, well, we'll call this 3, okay? Because that's the, thir that's the charge of interest, and I'll call that Q2. It took me a while to determine what I wanted to do there. So uh, if this thing is negative, let's talk about between 1 and 3. All right, if you take a look, I forgot the numbers. 20, maybe number 20 or something. What, what, if you look at our videos, whichever videos are longer is the ones I generally go into a lot more detail on. All right, so if you want a very thorough uh, analysis of a particular problem, check those out. And then the concepts I talk in the, about in those videos are then easily applied to then other problems, which I probably won't go as in depth, right? Otherwise, I can't get through as much material. And I know you guys want me to keep uh, getting through material for you. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, so basically this is a positive charge. This is a negative charge. They're going to be attractive, right? So the force then of Q1 on Q3 here will be pointing to the left, okay? And I'll label that F13. Then this is negative, this is positive. Now we're gonna talk about between Q2 and Q3. So that's attractive and that's gonna be pointing in now the opposite direction, right? because it's attractive towards the the other positive. So this is now, let's call this F23. Uh, okay. So now we know that um, when we, so let's do the problem, okay? So uh, what we also need to now do is let's take each piece individually. We can also state this, right? That the, uh, we're looking for the sum of all the charges, right? We're looking for the sum of all the forces, and not charges, the sum of all the forces on Q3. That's really what we're interested in. And what are the two forces? Well, I labeled them in the picture, the black and the blue, right? So we have the blue one pointing to the right, so that one's positive, so we say the force between charge two and charge three, minus then the force between charge one and charge three. And that should equal something. That's what we're trying to find out. Let's expand on each of these forces according to our force formula over there on the left meaning that it's going to be the electrostatic constant K multiplied by the charge of two times the charge of three. Remember, it's always between whatever two charges you're finding the force between. Divided then by the distance between them squared, okay? Then minus K times Q1 and Q3 now, all then divided by the distance between Q1 and Q3 squared. That's gonna be equal to some value. All right, and now basically what we need to do is just plug everything on in, okay? So K is gonna be 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Q2, what is it? Well, it said it's just Q, but remember they told you what Q is up here. It's one micro coulomb, but you know we need that in coulomb, so that's one times 10 to the minus sixth. Times then Q3, what's Q3? Well, it's gonna be a negative, but remember we're taking the absolute value, so who cares? Don't even bother plugging in the negative sign. It's gonna be two times Q. So that's going to be two times 10 to the minus sixth. Great, and then this whole thing all over the distance between those two squared. So this is eight centimeters. This looks like 11 centimeters to me. So the difference is three centimeters, but you know we need that in meters. So just move the decimal two places to the left. And therefore that's going to be 0 0.03 squared minus the next guy. So this is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Absolute value of, again, it's going, well, not again, but it's going to be Q1 and that's a positive Q. So it's basically the same thing. One times 10 to the minus six times then Q2, don't worry about the magnitude, two times 10 to the minus six, all then divided by the distance between them. So this looks like it's at zero, one, two, three, right? And this is at three and this is at eight. So the difference between them is going to be, it looks like five, right? So it's gonna be there, that's in centimeters, but you need that in meters. So move the decimal two place to the left. So it's 0 0.05 squared and voila, calculator time. So 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times one times 10 uh, to the minus six times two times 10 to the minus six divided by 0 0.03 squared. And then minus now 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times one times 10 to the minus six times two times 10 to the minus six divided by 0 0.05 squared. And what do we get? About 12, so the force here, so the sum of all the forces 
on 3 is going to be equal to 12.8 newtons. All right, and it's positive, so that tells us that the net force is going to be pointing to the right. Okay, so this is the net force on charge three. All right, and that kind of makes that should hopefully make sense. These two are equal in magnitude, but the charge here is closer to Q2 than it was to Q3, and therefore Q2 should be pulling harder on it. Great, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day.